Let's look at the factors that influence the acidity in carbonyl systems. And when we talk about acidity, we're always referencing the alpha carbon in all these carbonyl systems. So the compound doesn't necessarily only need to have one carbonyl. And what we'll see is that a combination of carbonyls influences the acidity dramatically. Let's start with acetaldehyde, a simple carbonyl. Acetaldehyde is a two carbon carbonyl. It's an aldehyde where it has one methyl group and one hydrogen coming off of the carbonyl. Now let's just focus on this carbon here. It's a methyl group and it's terminal, so we know it has three hydrogens. And because it's directly adjacent to the carbonyl carbon, we call it alpha. So why are these alpha protons acidic? Well, it turns out if we look at the carbonyl oxygen, we need to understand that it's electronegative and therefore it more readily bears a negative charge. So between this carbonyl carbon and this oxygen, we see a pi bond, but then it follows that the electron density is more concentrated on the oxygen than it is the carbon. So that's why we say the carbonyl oxygen is partially negative, whereas the carbonyl carbon is partially positive. So if this oxygen atom can bear the negative charge more readily in this pi bond compared to the carbon, Let's imagine we pluck off one of these hydrogens. So we can have a base come in. It goes after these hydrogens. Let's pretend it's acidic for now. And because of arrow pushing, the carbon proton electrons go back into the compound and the carbonyl oxygen, the electronegative atom, can bear the negative charge. So we show that arrow pushing like this. Because of this, what we get is the enolate. And we understand there are two resonance structures for that. If we're drawing the reaction mechanism like this, resonance form 1 is the alkene containing enolate looking like this. And we know through resonance the negative charge can be dispersed over a greater area and therefore the alpha position also bears a partial negative charge. What we've shown here is that carbonyl containing compounds are inherently acidic at the alpha position. And if we try to quantify the acidity of acetaldehyde, in terms of pKa, it comes out to about 17, which is fairly acidic. How do we increase or decrease this pKa? What if I want to get a pKa close to 6, or something close to 30? How do we influence how readily an enolate forms? In other words, what factors contribute to carbonyl-containing compound acidity? Well, one example is ethyl acetate. What we can do now is draw an aldolone pairs and analyze how this compound is actually less acidic than acetaldehyde. So the pKa of ethyl acetate is roughly 26. How do we explain that? Well, we know the carbonyl as a functional group is electron withdrawing because of the electronegative oxygen. We explained that here. But what effect does this ethoxy group have? Well, instead of the electron withdrawal that's seen in the oxygen to carbon double bond. In single bond systems, oxygen also bears two lone pairs and can actually donate electron density, like so. So we classify the ethoxy group as an electron donating group, which actually reduces the acidity of the compound, meaning it drives up the pKa. So the ethoxy group is an electron donating group. And more specifically, it's donating electron density by resonance. So let's imagine that ethyl acetate has been converted to an enolate, like here. And specifically, let's draw out resonance form 2 of what would be the ethyl acetate enolate. Here's the issue. We have a lone pair in the alpha position, and we know it's mobile. It can be readily delocalized with the carbonyl oxygen. We showed that here. So we understand that this lone pair can establish a pi bond and drive electrons up to the carbonyl oxygen, which can readily bear a negative charge. So what we get is another contributing structure, which looks like this. But the story gets a little complicated when we add an electron donating group that donates specifically by resonance. And what we see is that the lone pair on the ethoxy group donates electron density, forming a double bond between the carbonyl carbon and the ethoxy oxygen, looking like this. So the point we're trying to illustrate here is that there's competition. This portion of the ester can donate electron density, which would drive electrons up to the carbonyl oxygen. On top of that, the lone pair on the alpha position, as a result of deprotonation to form the enolate, 
can also drive electrons up to the oxygen. So the lone pair establishes a pi bond and the electrons are driven back up to the oxygen. This competition between the electron donation from the alpha position, which is inherent, and this electron donating group by resonance means the pKa is increased. The acidity of this alpha position is decreased. A more extreme example would be an amide. So let's draw the general structure of an amide linkage. And with this, we also explain why protein backbones are so stable, why the amide linkage is the backbone to proteins. It turns out this nitrogen lone pair can donate electron density even better than this ethoxy portion, which goes to show that the nitrogen to carbon bond is really a partial pi bond. It exhibits partial pi bond character. And you can't even measure the acidity of an amide in an aqueous environment. So the alpha position is not acidic in amides. And that's why we see a partial pi bond character. Let's look at an example of an EDG, which donates electron density, but not by resonance. Let's go back to acetaldehyde. We said the pKa is roughly 17. Let's replace this hydrogen with a methyl group and draw another structure, which is acetone. Acetone has two methyl groups compared to acetaldehyde, which just has one. Now this methyl group can't donate electron density by resonance. So how do we explain the fact that it's 1,000 times less acidic compared to acetaldehyde? The pKa here is 20. So if we can't donate by resonance, what we should think about is hyperconjugation. And by expanding the methyl group, what we see is that we have three carbon-hydrogen bonds. These are sigma bonds. And it turns out neighboring sigma bonds, carbon-carbon or carbon-hydrogen, are able to donate electron density towards the carbonyl, which means it reduces its reactivity. For one, the carbonyl carbon is less electrophilic compared to acetaldehyde. And on top of that, the electron donation that would have to happen if we formed the enolate at the alpha position would mean the methyl group can also compete, not by resonance, but by the inductive effect. So we can't imagine a lone pair that's competing with this lone pair. But we know by hyperconjugation, the electron density from these carbon-hydrogen sigma bonds would also compete with the lone pair as a result of forming the enolate. So that's how we explain the reduced acidity. Now let's try to dramatically increase the acidity. So far, what we've talked about are groups that can donate electron density by resonance or by hyperconjugation, which means we're driving up the pKa. How do we lower it by over a trillion times? How do we get the pKa close to 6? Well, essentially, the principle is, if we can stabilize that negative charge on the enolate more readily, the alpha acidity is increased. The compound can more readily disperse that negative charge, which means we have a lowered pKa. What we're saying here is that if we increase the stability as a result of electron delocalization, that increase in stability would mean this theoretical compound can more readily bear the negative charge. And if it could more readily disperse the negative charge, that means the enolate can form more readily. And if the enolate forms readily, finally, what we're trying to say is that the compound has a lower pKa. We have increased alpha acidity. Now let's see how we can do this. How can we form a compound that can disperse the negative charge more readily? Let's go back to our structure of acetaldehyde. And let's imagine that the enolate has formed. Now we understand that the lone pair on the alpha position can establish a pi bond, meaning the carbonyl oxygen can bear the negative charge. But this compound's pKa is only 17. How do we get this to somewhere around 10 or even 6? What we need is another avenue for this lone pair to be delocalized. Essentially what we're trying to say is we need another electron withdrawing group. 